Chapter 9, Lesson 4, Essential Question. How can you use a line graph to display and analyze real-world data? This just means to show and um, to analyze real-world data. It's just to like answer questions and come to some understanding about the data. Make sure that for this lesson you also have a straight edge or a ruler. That will help immensely. Unlock the problem. A line graph is a graph that uses line segments to show how data changes over time. So data is information. The series of numbers placed at fixed distances that label the graph are the graph scale. The intervals or the difference between the values on the scale should be equal. So that part is basically saying that like on this line graph right here that the scale is from 40, basically. They have the you always start at zero, but this broken line um, means that this doesn't match the same as the rest of this skip counting wise. So the scale is 40 to 54, but the interval is what changes. This one's by two. So now let's look at unlock the problem. It says to graph the data, use the graph to determine the times between which the greatest temperature change occurred. So the first thing that you need to do, well, if we underline what we're being asked to find, they're telling us to graph it, and then we are looking for the greatest temperature change, or between which times, okay? So before we can plot our points, we have to have our ordered pairs. So... Our x coordinate is going to be the time because that's the horizontal line right here. So the, the time will be this first spot and then the temperature will be the y coordinate, the second um, number. So press pause and write down all the information from the table as ordered pairs. All right, and so that was time and temperature. Now this is real world data because this was this was like an experiment kind of where they recorded times and then they um, recorded the temperature based on that time. So step one, for the vertical axis choose a scale and an interval that are appropriate for the data. You can show a break in the scale between 0 and 40 since there are no temperatures between 0 and 44. All right, so that's why they have the scale being 0 to 54 because our top number is 51. And you always want to do a few above your top number just so that you can actually see the line. And then their scale or their interval is they decided that because our lowest number is 44, they decided to start at 40 and then count by twos. So the interval is twos. Step two, for the horizontal axis, that's the bottom, going left to right, you write the times of the day. Again, you generally start at zero, but with this being times, these are the times that we have for our x-axis. Um, we need a title for the graph and a name for each of the axes to um, tell us what you're recording. So right here the table says recorded temperatures, that's the title. So that's the title on the graph as well. Um, our y-axis, the one that goes up and down vertically, that was the temperatures, so we wrote the, they wrote the word temperature. The x-axis, the horizontal left to right, that's the time, so those are names. So now that the graph is actually all set up and ready to go, it's now time to actually graph the ordered pairs. So go ahead and press pause and plot the points uh, right up here of those ordered pairs on your graph. Here are the data points that I plotted. They did the first three for you, so here's the other four going time first and then up to the temperature. So the last part to actually make it a graph is to connect the dots going left to right to make it a line graph. Use your ruler and make a straight line as possible. Press pause and do so. 
I do not have a ruler, so my lines are as, the, as good as I could get them. Um, so now that our line graph is created, we need to actually answer our questions. Okay, So we need to look at each line segment in the graph, so from plot, uh, point to point, and find the li line segment that shows the greatest change in temperature between two consecutive points. That means two in a row points. So I can look right here. That's um, about two. That's the same as that last one. This one looks like it goes a little bit longer. Short, short, short. So I would say that right here between 3 and 4 o'clock, there's the biggest dip in the line. So the greatest temperature change occurred between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Try this. Jill used a rain gauge to collect data on it, the total rainfall during six days at her home in Miami. She read the amount of rain collected in the rain gauge each day and did not pour it out. Her data is shown in the table. Make a line graph to display Jill's data. So, step one, write the related pairs of data as ordered pairs. So here's the table, and they've given you that the first one will be the day of the week, and the second one is going to be the inches in rainfall. So press pause and fill those in. Step two is to choose a scale and an interval for the data. So remember, the scale is what is going to be actually on the x-axis. So our numbers are pretty low. So I say we just start with zero. So our scale is going to start at zero. And how high do we need to go? Well, the highest piece of data that, or the greatest piece of data that we have is a nine. So we could probably be okay with our scale being a 0 to 10. And the next step is the interval. So the interval is what are we going to count by? Are we going to count by 1s? Are we going to count by 2s? Count by 3s? What will get us the most precise table but also use a reasonable amount of space? Um, with it being 0 to 10, uh, let's look at the amount of space that we have. It looks like we have a decent amount, like we have more than 10 graph squares, and so I think it would be okay to count by ones in this case. So our interval is going to be a one. Step three is to label the horizontal and vertical axes. So you need to first use your ruler and create a vertical and a horizontal line axis. So your vertical line should be about right here, closer to the left-hand side, and your horizontal should be fairly close to the bottom, not right on it because you still have to write your, um, like your, inner, your days of the week or your numbers and the um, title for the label for the axis. So about right here and here, create your X and Y axis lines. The next step is to write um, your titles. So you need to have a title for your graph and then a label for what the Y axis is going to be and what the X axis is going to be. So I just took the titles that they had on the table. So the main title, Rainfall Collected, um, the x-axis, because that's the first one that we used, was the day of the week, so that's down here at the bottom. And then the second was the rainfall in inches, and you should include in inches because that's the measurement that is used. It wasn't two miles, it wasn't two centimeters, it was two inches collected on that day. So that's, and the y is usually written sideways. So the next step is to... Um, actually label the intervals. So we're starting at zero where they meet, so that corner is zero, and then every line is one. So make sure that you label every line with the numbers, and then Monday is going, I'm going to go like every other line for each day of the week. So go ahead and finish labeling out your x and y axis. 
So you can see here that I finished labeling these. I did one per line because our interval was one, so I counted by ones. And then on the x-axis, the day of the week, um, I put a little tab so I knew exactly what line I meant for each day of the week. And I, just for sake of space, I did every other um, line. But it needs to be consistent. So whatever you do from the, the first set, you need to do through all of them. So they are all set at every other. And then I used the two colors just so that you could see um, that they were the different days. So now that we actually have our graph created, the next step is to actually graph your ordered pairs. So press pause and graph your six data points and then connect them with line segments using your ruler. This is what your graph should end up looking. You have your points and they are connected by straight lines. So now, <laughs> what are we being asked to answer? So on which day um, was the total rainfall recorded the greatest? And then on which day did Jill record the greatest increase in rainfall collected from the previous day? So answer those two questions. So on uh, number one, it's which day was the total rainfall recorded the greatest. So the total rainfall recorded the greatest. That one is Saturday. That has the greatest amount recorded. So the first one is Saturday. The second one is on which day did Jill record the greatest increase? Okay, so greatest increase. We're looking for the difference between them. So which line segment like increases at the steepest amount? Well, I can just look right here and I can tell that it's between Wednesday and Thursday. So which day was that recorded? That was recorded on Thursday. Now let's look right here at the math talk real quick. How could you use the graph to identify the two readings between which it did not rain? Because she didn't dump the rain grain gauge out, can we tell that it didn't rain between two days? Well, we can see right here between Monday and Tuesday, there was no change. So you can tell that it did not rain between Monday and Tuesday. For the Share and Show, you are going to be answering questions one and two and then creating your own line graph and then answering the question on number four. So press pause and work through the Share and Show. So for questions one and two, um, well, question one, the scale, I chose to go 0 to 100. Most of this is hanging around in the middle between there, but if I use my interval that I decided of 20, which I'm actually going to go every other line, so 10 would be every single line, I can easily fit 0 to 100 in the space given to me. Now this is not the only scale that you could use. Um, if you wanted to use a broken, um, like a like our unlock the problem, how it had that zigzag at the bottom, you could do something like 35 to 75 and intervals of counting by five. Um, this part is not um, concrete. This has lots of different answers. However, number two, this is what your ordered pair should look like. So now I'm going to make our line graph. Here's my basic setup. Um, I have my y-axis being the temperature in Fahrenheit, I have my x-axis being the month, and then I have my title for the whole thing of being Tupelo's average monthly temperature. I plotted my points and I had to remember that the in-between lines were counting by 10, so like 44 has to be not quite in the middle between 40 and 50. Now I connect them, and there's my graph, so now I can answer number 4. Use the graph to determine between which two months the least change in average temperatures occurred. So instead of looking for the biggest change, we're looking for the smallest change. So as I'm looking, I'm seeing that it looks like between January and February has the smallest increased. So the biggest change happens between January and February.